John Delacio, I'm excited to announce that we are helping people. A very terrible, wonderful thing happened to me. How many ever saw the movie Casablanca? Melissa, did you ever see it? It's a wonderful classic. Well, first of all, I like, I like Humphrey Bogart. You need to go online and watch the classic movie Casablanca. In fact, we're going to call this Casablanca and the Narcissist. How's that? Casablanca and the Narcissist. I like Humphrey Bogart. I love the movie The Juggle Queen, and he was always like, talk like a tough guy, you know, but that was his role in most movies. And in the movie Casablanca, I like it for many reasons. I know you too, Pastor Larry, even, I think they wore it out. Pastor Larry and Sandy, I think you watched that movie more than me. In fact, I know you did. But I loved the setting of the time. What class? It would be the time when people got dressed to go on an airplane. Like it was, you know what I mean? People actually, it was a big thing to go on and coach. It was a big thing. People would actually get dressed night to go on an airplane. It was a privilege. Today they, they wear their pajamas on the plane. But it was that time with class, with the restaurants, with the white jackets and the black bow ties and the one of Sam on the piano. Many think about that. And it was a very interesting time with a lot going on uh, with wars. And Humphrey Bogart, I forget his name. What's the name of that? What was the name of his? He had a nightclub. And somebody looking, I forget the name of the, 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 the club that he had, but Jennifer's looking up for me. And before, I guess he had this club, he was in a relationship with a woman. And... I'll tell this for Charles. Charles, God made the earth. Look, and he rested. God made man, and he rested. God made woman, and neither God nor man has rested since. Now, this is one of the few times I will be politically correct because Miriam just looked at me like that. The truth of the matter is, this is for all the nice ladies. God created man, Miriam, and he said, I could do better than that. So he made woman. Okay? You like the first one better, Miriam. She didn't get either one. Okay. When you start dating again, you'll get it, you'll get it more. Anyway, he falls in love with this woman, and... They were going to meet, and she doesn't show up. If you want to know the reason, you have to watch the movie. So now he has a very successful nightclub. And he's at the bar. His piano player, Sam, is playing a song. And it was... Humphrey Bogart, what was the name of the hotel? Of the thing? Rick's. Huh? Rick's. Rick's. Rick's Place. That was the name of the club. Everybody goes to Rick's Place. Right? Pastor Larry was dying to tell me. I, I thought he was going to call me pretty soon and tell me, but we got a Rick's Place. And they had a special song. And Sam started playing the song. And he would get mad. Sam, what I tell you? Never, I never want to hear that song again. Because it brought back memories of this girl that stood him up that he was in love with. He's at the bar. He turns around. And the girl. Well, let me tell you why. I have to tell you now a little bit more. 
I don't want to ruin the movie for you. But the girl walks in in his nightclub. He turns around and he sees her. And this is what he said. With all the joints in the world, she's got to show up at mine. That's how he would talk. With all the joints in the world, she's got to show up at mine. Well, what does that have to do with narcissists? Thank God, they are far and few in between. But with all the churches in the world, one of them had to show up at mine. That's what I was thinking. With all the churches in the world, they had to show up at mine. And it was a exceedingly, abundantly, wonderful, miserable experience. Why was it good? I know the scripture. My God causes all things to work for good for those who love him and called according to his purpose. But it was awful what we had to go through with this individual. It was a expensive, painful, heartbreaking, aggravating learning experience. Well, why was it good? I never knew there were people like that on this earth. But now that I know it, I can help others because we have overcome them. If it wasn't for the anointing of my life, 43 plus years of full-time ministry, understanding and teaching against the Jezebel spirit, that thing could have destroyed our life in church. But it didn't because I'm smarter than it. I was trying to help them, not from the narcissist thing, because I didn't know they had it. It took a while to discern it. The doctors didn't, the the psychiatrists didn't, the people playing deliverance for them didn't discern it. But through a series of things they were doing, I said to myself, what's wrong with this person? But thank God for all my friends on Facebook. They started posting things about the narcissist thing. And an influx of them more and more and more. And I looked at that, the symptoms and what they went through with a narcissist So I began to do a study. And psychiatrists call it a personality disorder. You can call it what you want, but I call it not good. So I started to do a study on it. So let me start off by saying, I want to help you with it. I want to help everybody I can. Now you can help people too. If you know a couple that are dating and you have concerns about one of the people in that couple, warn the other person to do their own study on the narcissist. Warn that friend. If they don't listen, warn their parents and give their parents an education. And it's all over the place now that I'm looking at it You can look on the internet and they have doctors, psychiatrists. uh, I want to say attorneys, they probably get involved too. And uh, exposing this thing and trying to help people. It's terrible. It is terrible. Now, they say it is not a mental thing. Not a mental thing. They say it's not a physical thing. They say it's a personality disorder. And they say that there's no or very little way you can help these people. So why am I talking about it? I'm not a doctor. If you are dealing with somebody and they have narcissist personality disorder, the way you can find out is go online and look up professional people who know a lot more about this than me. But here's the situation. They say only 15% of the people in America 
have this problem, this disorder. Thank God. But one of them showed up at our place. It was good because I learned a lot and I am now determined to warn everybody about it. Uh huh. I'm going to do it. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. I'm glad you got a lot of questions. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a licensed whatever. But I am a man of God who's been in full-time ministry well over 40 years, pastoring the same church since 1988, was an executive assistant associate pastor, and in charge of the counseling department for a very big ministry for 10 years before I became a senior pastor in 1988. I have some experience. I owned quite a few businesses. I have never met anybody like that. I even told them, you make me feel like a failure. I've had a lot of employees, a lot of staff members, a lot of church members, and I don't know why you can't get the help that you need. And what here was the first symptom that I began to notice. They got sick a lot. But never when the ball game was on. Never football. Never the baseball. They were good. They were healthy. But every time our ministry had a chance to really get on its feet and go forward, they would manifest with some kind of, they had a heart attack or they were having a stroke or whatever. And I told the rest of our staff, it's very interesting. This always happens when we have a chance to go forward. And I found out from my friends that one of the symptoms of somebody that has this will ruin every special event, even their own wedding. And then I started seeing other symptoms, so we tried to get them psychological help, and we sent them, first of all, we sent them to doctors. They couldn't find nothing. Then we sent them to psychiatrists. And now here's the problem that I'm learning from I'm learning this from psychiatrists that it's very hard to diagnose. You have to be, they say, Kathy, they say that you have to be a licensed psychiatrist to diagnose it. And then the same people say this, but it's hard to diagnose it because it's so sneaky and it tries to hide. Even they have a hard time diagnosing it. So I am not saying that that person who showed up at our place was a full-fledged narcissist, but by experience I could say this, they sure have all the symptoms. So maybe a person in your life that's raining on your party, breaking your heart, doing terrible things to ruin every special event, maybe they are not a full-fledged diagnosed as a narcissist, but if they have those kind of personalities, you need to deal with it. So, does somebody, am I flowing right now? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Am I communicating? I want to help people. So, I did, uh, if you have a prophetic anointing, what does that mean? A lot of you watching may not even be Christians or you're not church people or whatever. But I'm glad that most of you are not like that. What a terrible world it would be if 85% of the people were narcissists instead of 15% that they say. But Nobody's going to convince me there's only 15%. There's a lot more. And they're that way because they want to be that way. Because they don't want to change. They said you can't, there's no cure for it. You can give some medication to try to make them be nice. 
uh, and you can give them a little counseling, but there's no comprending. Now, I don't want to get into this this too much right now because we're going to be talking more about this on the first Friday of May, May the 5th. We're going to be teaching on exposing the symptoms of the narcissist personality disorder. That's May the 5th. June the 2nd, we are going to deal with, we're going to help try to help people understand, how do you deal with somebody like that that's in your life? What if you're married to them? What if they're a parent? What if they're a child? What if they're a friend? How do you deal with it? Do you let them keep hurting you? Or your family? What do you do? We're going to talk about that June the 2nd. Then, this type of an individual with this disorder causes a lot of abuse. So whether it's abuse from verbal abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, or the narcissist abuse, on July the 7th, Friday, July the 7th, double check the day, make sure that's the right day, we are going to have a healing service, healing from abuse. Then, good news. Finally, back by popular demand, I am again going to do the series, Freedom from the Jezebel Influence. Why am I teaching the subject? Freedom from the Jezebel Influence will be on Friday, August the 4th. Then it's going to kick off a series that I'm going to do on freedom from the Jezebel influence. Exposing it, dealing with it, and I have preached in well over 500 services a year for many years. And so many different types of Denominations, non-denominational, interdenominational churches and ministries. So Miriam, we are going to do this right. We're not going to be pushed to do it. It's going to be a whole series. And because I'm a minister and I've seen it attack churches and ministers, where other place would be more appropriate to teach it on Sundays. So, you're going to have to get the video and announce all those announcements because I am also. August the 4th will be a Friday. First month of August. We are going to introduce it, talk about it, expose it. Then we're going to kick off a series that we are going to teach for the next 10 Sundays at 2.30 in the afternoon in Orlando, at a Sunday service in Orlando. You all got that? All right. So mark your calendar. The teaching right now, we're having Friday night ministry services, but the Jezebel, you could call it a seminar. You could call it a conference. You could call it whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. But I felt it was appropriate to teach it on a Sunday because that thing has tried to ruin so many churches, men and women of God. And so we're going to deal with it on a Sunday. So if you want more information about the series that we're going to be teaching of Freedom from the Jezebel Influence and you want an RSVP, I really want you to make a... There's so much to say about it. We will probably be dealing with it two Friday nights and ten Sunday afternoons. 2.30 in the afternoon at our 2.30 service in Orlando. But Freedom from the Narcissist, we're going to be dealing with that on May 5th, June 2nd, and July 7th. Now, all the other Fridays... We're going to be doing things like this and a lot of other subjects that we're going to be talking about. 
So I tried to go a little slow. This was a lot to comprehend, but did everybody understand what I just said? Did I do good? Jesus created the world and he said it was good. So I think I did a good job because that was a mouthful. So why am I calling this Casablanca and the narcissist? Humphrey Bogart said, with all the joints in the world, she had to show up at mine. And when I was dealing with that individual, I would say, out of all the churches in the world, it had to come to mine. But I am glad that they did because I never, ever, ever would have had that experience see the very problem you have the very attack against you it's your ministry you might not like it you might squall and bowl I know one prophet he was crying out to God God told him he was going to take him to a new level a real prophet that really hears from God and God said to him I'm taking you to a new level everything was going wrong everything and he said God you told me now you're going to take me to a new level and I got all these problems. And he said, he heard God say, welcome to your new level. That was a friend of mine named Bishop Bill Hammond who I heard him say that. He was squalling and he could, he could talk faster than you can listen. When he prophesies, it's like a machine gun. And he said, God, you told me he was taking me to a new level. And he heard Holy Spirit say, Welcome to your new level. So when you have a situation, a problem you're going through, you're in training for reigning and schooling for ruling. And the good thing is this. It's a test. Everything in life is a test. If you pass the test, you get a promotion. You never fail. Not in God's classroom. You know what happens when you fail, Melissa? You get to take it over again until you get it right. Melissa's thinking, why did I come today? And where is my uh, mentor? She's glad you're here. She's proud of you. All right. A lot of information. Listen to it over and over and over again. And with pencil and paper, pause it, make notes. Now, I'll say this one more time. I'm going to be doing a lot of teaching on this. If you know anybody, you are concerned about the person they're in relationship with or engaged to, and you see that the person could have these symptoms, warn them. Warn them. Deliver your soul. If you can warn their parents to learn about the narcissist thing, because it not only affects them or the person their relationship with, it affects the whole family and the whole church and a lot of other people. Thank God I'm smarter than it. Thank God I'm anointed. Thank God all the time they thought they were playing their little game. They weren't appreciative to know that what we were trying to do was get them help. Unfortunately, they would rather run than get the help. <coughs> so I'm going to do everything I can to let everybody I know understand this thing is real and it's horrible. Real and horrible. Learn everything you can about it. If you're in a relationship and you can understand what the heck is going on, Learn and keep watching the videos that we're going to be doing. And, and if you cannot come, if you're not in traveling distance and you want to come to these meetings, you can connect by Zoom. But if you are in traveling distance, no excuse. No, I'm a real stickler about that. We work hard to prepare a message. We paid a heavy price to learn. And I want people hungry enough to come after it. Because if you want the anointing, you got to go after it. It doesn't come cheap. How bad do you want to get free? How bad do you want to help other people get free? If you're in driving distance, RSVP to come. 
If you are not in driving distance and you are interested in this, email me at Pastor John DeLacio at yahoo.com and you can connect by the way of Zoom or phone or some other way. We want to get the word out. Now, if you got more curious, if you're curious about why I am sharing this and you want to really understand more, keep watching the videos on, on why. One of them, it will be called Bird Dog and the Narcissist. Somebody say Bird Dog and the Narcissist. Watch that one. The other one I want you to watch is We'll call it horses and the narcissists. We'll call it racing. Whether it's car racing or motorcycle racing or boat racing or horse racing. I, 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 I'm thinking of horse racing because you're seeing uh, uh, a photo there of me in uh, racing horses when I was a couple years younger. I'm going to talk about racing and the narcissists. Watch the video. You'll understand more. Don't judge me until you've heard all the facts. Then watch the one called Bird Dog and the Narcissist. And we're going to help one another get free and set free. Because the Lord came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But the thief came to kill, to cheat, to steal, and destroy. One of the books that I'm writing... I don't want to give away the title before somebody steals it, but I will give you the title because it won't be like this one. The title of one of the books I'm writing is Freedom from the Jezebel Influence, but another one is called Friends. Oh, I could tell you some good things about Friends. And the other one is called God Has More for You. Why are you watching this today? Because God loves you too much to leave you this way. And he put a man of God in front of you to help you know that and to help us learn how to get that life and more abundantly. We went a little longer than I wanted to, but not longer than God wanted us to, so we're okay. Share this with somebody that you believe it will help or warn. All right, well, love you. 